Okay. All right here, Lord, we're waiting on you. All right here, Lord, we're waiting on you. Can't do nothing till you come. I'm singing, Lord, we're waiting on you. I'm praying, Lord, we're waiting on you. Can't do nothing till you come. I'm right here, Lord, we're waiting on you. I'm right here, Lord, we're waiting on you. Can't do nothing till you come. I'm praying, Lord, we're waiting on you. I'm praying, Lord, we're waiting on you. Can't do nothing till you come. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Timothy, the first apostle, um, excuse my voice, I was sick the last couple of days, <laughs> of Paul the apostle to Timothy. <laughs> Greeting. Mm -hmm. Paul, and, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God, our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope. To Timothy, a true son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. No other doctrine. As I urge you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Eph Ephesus, that you may charge. I'm sorry, what is it? Ephesus. Ephesus, mm -hmm. that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables and endless general genealogy, sorry, which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in faith. Now, the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith, from which some having strayed, having turned aside to idle talk. Amen. 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 Let us pray. This, Father God, our Lord and our Savior, Father, we come before your throne of grace once again as we have a blood-bought right to assemble ourselves around your throne of grace. Around your throne of grace, we find love, we peace, and help. And Father, we come to say thank you for it, because without you, we are nothing. Then Father, I come and I ask that you just breathe on this church and every member, attendee, and all who are listening, whether it be Zoom or Facebook. Father, just touch us because we need you. And Father, I ask you to speak through me as I prepare to bring the message this morning, titled, Ride on King Jesus. Father, we know we are in a sinful world, but we know who holds the reins of the world, and that's you. And Father, I just ask that you uh, bring us peace and love as we go through today's service and throughout the day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into a covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of the church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship services, I mean, worship ordinances, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel to all nations. 
We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportments, to avoid all tattletelling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drink as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, and to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feelings and courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior, to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and principles of God's word. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, we have come down to the part in our worship service that's known as altar call, altar prayer. We know that we all need prayer. We know that prayer is our communication with God, and he loves hearing from us and talking with us. Either we are talking and speaking to him, and then we stop speaking and listen to him, because he does talk to us. And if you have a prayer request, you can unmute or make your request known as we get ready to go to God and pray. No special prayer requests. Okay. Shall we? Kind Father, our Heavenly Father, Father, we come before you, laying all of our cares, our concerns, and requests known to you by placing them on the altar of our heart because you looks at the heart. You knows our, us better than we know ourselves. You knows our inner beings, our thoughts, even before we thank them because you are the sovereign God. And we thank you for being the sovereign God that you are. And we thank you because you are our unchanging God. We thank you because you are God that has no beginning and no end. And we th also thank you because you are God that is no respect of person. You love us all the same and you will punish us all the same or you will reward us all the same. And Father, we thank you. But Father, there's so much sickness, distress, uh, evilness, uh, bereavement and grieving going on in our world and in our nation today, even in our cities. Many in our homes are suffering from some discomfort or adversity in our lives. And Father, I come asking you for just a healing this morning because we know there is love in your touch. There's healing in your touch. There's comfort in your touch. There's deliverance in your touch. There is uh, a clear mind in your, in your touch. And Father, we just asking you for a touch this moment because you being God and God all by yourself, you know the need of every person on this earth and in this nation, and on this phone and on Zoom and on Facebook. You know that because you are the sovereign God. And we are asking through this, our sincere prayer, just provide the need through your touch this morning. Father, because we know that you can, and we are believing that you will. 
because we know that you are a prayer hearing and answering God. And when we make our wishes known to you, you are faithful to answer. And then Father, when, we, when you answer, give us the, the knowledge and the wisdom to know that you have answered our prayer. You've touched and you've healed. You comfort our minds and you have cleared up our weary mind for whatever is uh, causing our thought pattern to be confused and unclear. We ask you just to clear it all. And Father, we are just so grateful to you for answering our prayers as we pray them in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. <clears throat> well, this morning, as a, our subject of our message is right on King Jesus. And it's coming out of Revelation, the 19th chapter, verses 13 through 19. I'll read all of them. And you'll see why, as I go to, why we're saying right on King Jesus. And if I had to use a subtitle to this message today, is that Jesus Christ, Lord of Lord and King of Kings, because he is. So let me just read the scripture, beginning in verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nation, and he shall rule them with an rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he had in on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourself together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the king of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. The word of God for the people of God. Right on, King Jesus. And a previous Sunday school lessons and in some of the messages, we have been looking at, uh, discuss the events and the heavenly vision that was shown John the Baptist while he was uh, out there isolated on the Isle of Patmos. And being in the spirit, Christ showed him these events that were to occur at the end of the ages. And the event that stood out in my mind that struck a chord with me is how believers will be vindicated of the pain and suffering we are now encountering because of our association with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. But we must remember that during Jesus' earthly stay here on earth, he warned us, believers, that we would suffer many things because of our association with him. And we are, as he told us, 
and Jesus is truthful. Many of our suffering will come at the hand of Satan and his army, that he and his army is against God's people and their mission, Satan's and his army mission is to seek and to destroy. And if you look at the works of Satan, it is destructive in nature. Nothing good about what Satan is doing and it's all geared toward God's people. But let me just remind you, believers, we are victorious because Jesus is our mighty warrior who has come, overcome all of the trials and the tribulation that we, his followers, will face. So my being obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit, I was led to talk about believers riding with King Jesus as he returned to rule the world with truth and justice. So try to reflect on the verses when we talked about Jesus, right on King Jesus, and what was happening uh, 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 in this setting uh, that John saw and he was telling us, okay? And let me say this, how Jesus is going to be victorious because he is the God and he was present with God the Father doing creation and everything that was created was by him. He won the victory over Satan at the cross, making a way for all who believe in him as their personal savior is assured of salvation and guarantees all believers will spend eternity with him in heaven. And when he returns to earth, we will rule with him, return with him, and those we, she said, and our scripture text talks about Jesus on his white horse and his army. Those are his, we are his believers, this army of believers is coming back to put Satan in his place once and for all. Yes, and we can sing that song and we will get to, we will be able to shout for joy and sing the song. Right on, King Jesus, because we would have been overcomers all of this adversity that we are now encountering while here on earth. Okay, and as I just said, Jesus told us we was going to encounter these things, but He also told us, "Do not worry about it, because I've already overcome the world." Isaiah forty-one and ten tells us. Listen, I don't want you to fear nothing. I want you to be faithful, be strong, and steadfast in your faith because I am with you and I will uphold you with my right hand. This is God talking to his believers. We have every reason and every assurance to remain steadfast in our faith in the midst of the trials and tribulations that we are encountering or that we will encounter because we know who our enemy is. And once we know who our enemy is, Satan, and we also know he's just a defeated foe, we know how to combat it. And we also know that God loves us so much that he dressed us in our battle gear and he armed us with his soul. I and mean, in one of the scripture verses that Jesus had in his mouth, the soul, that means he is taking the fight to Satan. We are to take the fight to Satan because the Bible, God's word, is his sword. That's our offensive weapon. He dressed us with in our defensive, but our offensive weapon to take the fight to Satan and let him know, no, you has no win here because I am a child of the king. And one day I will reign with him. I... When he comes back, I'm gonna be riding in one of the on one of the white horses that will be following my mighty warrior King Jesus. So you have to get in your place, Satan. You have to leave me and my fellow believers alone. Because if one of us 
will put a thousand of Satan and his demons to flight. And one, two or more will put 10,000 to flight. So we have what we need to fight this spiritual warfare. And I'm not saying that we're not fighting it. I'm just saying what God has given us. And that is his sword, which is the word of God. And he has indwelled us with the Holy Spirit, who is God, will help us in this fight. Because he will keep talking to us, bringing things to our remembrance when Satan, because Satan is a master of disguises. He's very masterful. And he will paint a picture so believable until we, if we are not rooted and grounded in the word of God, we will begin to question our faith or we'll begin to believe Satan and his sanctified lies. See, that sword, the Bible, cuts like a two-edged sword. It will peel away all of the sinfulness and it, it will expose that and let us know that we have a God who sits high and looks low. We have a God who has built a hedge of protection around us. And his word is truth. And his word will not return to him bored. When he says that I have defeated, I have overcome the world, we must believe it and step out on faith. And as I say again, take the fight to Satan. Because we are on in his hostile territory. Because we are his enemy. Because we are God's chosen people. And he doesn't like that. And I'm going to remind you of something. There was a conversation in heaven. See, the fight is not between us. But we are the army of God or the army of Satan. That Satan told God. He was going to have more followers than God because Satan, in his own insanity of his own mind, felt that he wanted to be superior to God. And God told him, no, you won't. You will never be. And that's what he got kicked out of because he wanted to rule God. But the conversation was, when I said, that he was going to have more followers. And, he will, and God told him, no, you won't. Because before I let you defeat me, I will have the rocks to cry out and speak for me. Well, let me say this. As the word go forth, people are adhering and coming to Christ and believing in him and accepting him as their personal savior. And therefore, when this battle that Jesus is getting ready to fight come, we will, all who believers will be part of Christ's army. He will be the head of that army. He is coming to make war with Satan. And he's going to destroy Satan and all evil once and for all. And yes, we can say, right on, King Jesus, right on. Now, let me, add, let me just put this little plug in. Jesus will be riding on a white horse that represents righteousness and victory as he's coming to make war against all of the evil kings on the earth and their arms. That's told us that in that scripture. Only Jesus and his army will be victorious. This battle will be swift, subtle, and final. This is the battle of Armageddon that is spoken of in the scripture. And it is deemed as the battle of battles. Who is, uh, because who it, it, who it is against and who will be victorious. Jesus is, and his army is going to be victorious because as you said in our scripture version, he is not going to only, he's going to dis, destroy all evil. And the Antichrist himself will be destroyed. And with the destruction of the evil and the king in evil kings and princes of this world, 
the scripture said they were required. He, the angel called the birds from the air, said, I want you to come and consume the flesh of these evil people. Fall, even the false prophets, let me fight. Even the, the false prophets will be done away with. They will cease to exist because in their days of misleading God's people will have come to an end. And the point I really want you to get is that evilness has its end date. Jesus knows the end date of evilness. And this uh, lesson setting is focusing on when Jesus come at, with his arm to finally defeat Satan and evilness, all of it, once and for all. Then we as believers will be truly vindicated as we studied last Sunday, that we will be vindicated because Satan will be done away with. So this lesson tells us that yes, Jesus Christ is the righteous king. He is king of kings and he is Lord of lords. And yes, when it said right on King Jesus, because we have something to shout about and we can say like the late uh, Dr. Martin Luther King used to say, free at last, free at last. Yes, we will be free of all sin. We don't have to worry about uh, looking for Satan and his master for the disguise because he will have finally been defeated once and for all. We will, and our bodies, well, we will have glorified, transformed bodies like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We will no longer have to be suffering with the pain that we sometimes, our bodies is racked with pain. We will no longer have to uh, shed tears because of uh, troubles and burdens that we now experience. We no longer have to uh, suffer while being mistreated because of man and him feeling that he is superior to one of us, you and I, because we know that the God that we serve is no respect of person. He's a God that treats us all the same. And yes, we will be vindicated, we will be free, and we will live in perfect peace. And we will be able, and we will be at the part part uh, participants, that's the word I'm looking for, and the glorious worship service that John had showed us that is coming. And yes, we will be in his army because we will have overcome the world because of our steadfast, committed faith and belief in Jesus Christ and knowing and belief with our, without a shadow of a doubt that one day, Satan end date has come. We today is looking forward to that day when sin will no longer uh, hamper or disrupt our life. And we can have that peace now on earth as we keep our focus on Christ himself. And I know we've heard me say this phrase, we must remain God focused and Christ centered. Because it's in Christ, we have our righteousness. Because he made the transfer on the cross of Calvary. What was the transfer? He took our unrighteousness and gave us his righteousness. So we can wear the righteous garment of God's salvation. Yes, we as believers, a part of Christ's army who will defeat Satan at the Battle of Armageddon. Yes, we are part of Christ's army, his victorious army, I might add, that will reign with him in the new Jerusalem. All this, this foolishness or the upheaval that we now encounter, we'll no longer have to encounter that. See, we believers today are looking forward to that great vindication day. And I can't stress it enough. 
but we must keep our focus that what we are experiencing today is only temporary and is pale in comparison to the glorious event and the good times and the great joy that we will receive when we get to heaven. See, we are just pilgrims traveling through this land. But in while we are here, we have a duty because we've been commissioned by Christ himself to preach and teach salvation to all the world. And we have the indwelling Holy Spirit who will give us that boldness to proclaim the truth of God's word because God, the Father, will not be defeated by Satan because God has a multitude of believers. And I want to take your mind back to the opening of Revelation. When John looked and saw his first number, there was only 144,000. And when he looked again, there was a number that nobody could number. And all who believe is in that number. And believe you me, as I sit here today and proclaim this message, there is more and more people coming daily, being added to that day. Remember on the day of Pentecost, when, how, or when the Holy Spirit came, there was 120 that believed that day. And then the next day, there was 3,000 coming. Think about folks from around the world, all nationalities, coming to Christ, believing in him, and accepting him as their personal savior. We all, every individual is, a, is added to Christ's church and God's kingdom. And yes, all of those, all who believe will be part of Christ's army who's coming back to earth to defeat Satan and, put, and evil once again. See, when Christ comes return to earth to rule, it will be in peace, that perfect shalom, that perfect peace will re once again be restored as it was when God first created the earth and all humanity. Everything in the earth was created in peace and we lived together in harmony. But what destroyed that peace was Satan and his lies. And Eve succumbed to that, believing what he said when he twisted the truth and that's what I mean when I, one of the things I mean when I say Satan is a masterful disguise he will make a lie look like the truth and if we do not know the real truth we will fall to it that's why we have God's word and the indwelling Holy Spirit to give us that truth keep us on the right path and then if we stay in his word, we shall overcome. And as I'm getting ready to try and bring this message to a close, is this. And I may have said this before, but I, it's worth repeating to you as to who we are and the power we hold in our hands through the dwelling Holy Spirit. We have God, the Holy Spirit, living in us who have empowered us to be overcomers. We have God's word, the Holy Scripture, the Bible, to help us remain steadfast in our faith, our commitment, because we know this is temporary. We are on our way to heaven, and we will get there by in our remaining connected through our power source. Remember who we are and whose we are. And we being, being child of the king or children of the king, we are powerful, more powerful than Satan. We have to fight the fight of faith. And let me say this. We serve a God that has no beginning, no end, 
He's Alpha and Omega. He's the same God today as he was at the beginning of time. He'd be the same God as he was at the end of time. Because he's Lord of Lords. He is the firstborn from the resurrection, from the dead. He rose on Sunday morning, and all of us who believers rose with him on that Sunday morning. And he, Jesus Christ, when he, during his earthly stay, he demonstrated his power while on earth. Because he healed the sick. He is healed. Both spiritually and physically. He saved lost souls. He's still saving lost souls. Through the preach and taught word of God. The truth. He forgave sin. As he was only. He was God. And he, could only, he was the only one. Who could forgive sin. He opened up. Physically and spiritually blinded eyes. So then our spiritually blinded eyes, we could open to see him as we could see him with our natural eye. That's who Jesus is. Yes, he is king of kings. Yes, he is Lord of lords. And yes, we as believers will be riding with the king of kings and we will sing the words of this song. And I'm partially paraphrasing. Ride on, King Jesus. No man can hinder me. Ride on, King Jesus. No man can hinder me. But one of these moments, and it won't be long. And there's the phrase is, no man can hinder me. Any regardless of what we come against, Jesus as our Savior, we are victorious. It says the other part, it says, you're going to look for me and I'll be gone. Where will I be gone? I'll be gone ever because no man can hinder me. He said, well, we're going up to glory to sing and shout. And won't be nobody there to turn me out because all who's in heaven will be glad to see all the ones coming to heaven. Yes, we will have plenty to sing and shout about because we will have finally made it home to our heavenly home. We will be in the company of other heaven residents or saints of God, or if you want to call them children of God, we will be there. And yes, we can sing this song, right on, King Jesus, right on. Father God, I thank you for your son, Jesus. I thank you because he is Lord of Lord, King of King. And one day, he will defeat Satan and his demonic army. And I thank you for touching our all believers' hearts so they will be part of that heavenly army who will defeat Satan. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. At this point, we'll open the doors of the church. That any of you who like to join this branch of John, you may do so. And if you're on Zoom, I mean on Facebook, uh, shepherdministries.org, and membership, complete your membership and email it to the email address. We'll be, we'll love to have you. Because at this branch of Zion, we are only going to preach and teach Christ. We are going to fellowship with one another as they did in Acts, the second chapter, and in verses 42 to 47, where the Christian or the church community came together and loved, sharing with one another, not only goods, but in the, the doctrine of Christ. And if there was a need, the church met the need. So we are going to fellowship. We're going to operate in love, nothing but true love for one another. 
because we are commanded to love God first and our neighbor, as I said. Those are some of the principles that this church is founded on, and we're going to live by those. Those principles, because they have sustained a God-fearing church over the years, and they will continue to sustain his church. God be with you. God be with you until we meet again. Amen.